What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Duty, back again with another video. And that's right, folks. Your boy, Duty, is working really hard to provide some quality, meaningful content. And as you can see here, the new overlay uh, for your boy, Duty. He's going to be chanting this out on streams and also for recordings and so forth. Uh, I hope this definitely, I hope this saves the business. So if you want to take a quick look, you see all the nice little details. You see some WWE champions, some Wolverines, some win, some whale tail gin. And of course, uh, that is hot cat before, well, that is multiverse cat, uh, in the, in the universe where she never met Phil. That's right. And she's looking super fire. Anyway, what is up, everybody? It's your boy, Duty, back again with another video. And, of course, we're going to be taking a look at our boy DSP's daily rap video after a day of RPG. That's right, folks. Our boy played RPG. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't a good day for our boy, Phil. So let's see what he had to say. My final consecutive streaming day of this week. Another full day of RPG progress because I am pushing to try to get as far in Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth and Baldur's Gate 3 as I can, as quickly as I can, to try to wrap them up. I'm closer to beating those games than anything else right now. It makes sense to focus on them because there's new games right around the corner. In fact, it's coming Friday, so I need to clear the schedule, and that's why I played a heck out, the heck out of them recently. Um, Let's talk. Today on the Level 1 Podcast, good variety of topics discussed, uh, some various updates on different topics, Um, you know, a little bit of game news, but not too much um suggestion box that was the big focus today actually got some pretty good suggestions someone uh said why don't you take the guitar riff out of the podcast in the morning that's on demand no one likes it at the beginning of the show someone actually taught me about a pause feature during recording for example i can do this and then i'm over here all of a sudden magic jump cut because apparently this has been a feature in obs for the longest time and I had no idea about it. It's like a pause recording and then resume recording and it skips stuff. And that's pretty neat. I never knew. So let's say, for example, all of a sudden in the middle of a video, I got to pee. Oops, hit that, go pee, come back. And now there's no dead time in the video. I never knew about that. So I'm going to start implementing that for sure. Um, Good stuff. And then, you know, some also some suggestions that I hate to say are more nitpicky and just kind of annoying when people are so demanding of things like Kat coming on stream and doing co-op with me um you know you'll see what i mean if you watch the podcast this morning but anyway uh suggestion box always a good segment and it was like over half an hour and the show ran late because of it which i knew it would it always does um all right yeah your boy duty has a lot to say on this so first of all uh so I i'm calling this a suggestion trash bin segment because that's exactly what this is uh our boy phil decided to do a suggestion box because of course there was nothing else more to talk about so he went on and took about two or three suggestions. One of them took him nearly 25 minutes of ranting and raving for a suggestion made by one of his dents regarding his streams. And the focus of uh, the suggestion was co-op. The, the, the Cat Burnell, the Fat Cat, and Phil Burnell co-op streams. And he was, the guy that posted it was a bit annoyed with Cat's behavior which a lot of us said the same thing. You know, she was very unprofessional. She essentially rage quit the fucking, uh, the second co-op because she was bored. Uh, it's, it's like dealing with the fucking child. Cat acted like a straight up child. And I remember doing those videos and actually feeling bad for Phil because Phil was trying to produce meaningful content and Cat just wasn't having it. She was bored, tired, hungry, whatever the fuck was wrong with her. And she was acting like a fucking child and she stormed off the fucking stream. So this person was suggesting to her, hey, look, it looks like your wife was obvious, bo obviously bored. You don't understand what co-op means. Perhaps you guys should play something that's an actual co-op game. And, you know, if she's going to be on stream, then maybe she should be a little bit more professional. Which, of course, this fucking dunderhead took that as an attack like he always does. And he felt the need to defend his wife for some reason. And if you actually look at that segment and, and you pay attention, you could tell that cat's never coming the fuck back on. Fuck that. She she was tired and bored of that shit. And you could tell she didn't want to be there. And she only did it because this fucking dude probably begged her to be on. So she's never coming back on. If you, if you listen to what Phil is saying, we're never going to see Fat Cat again. 
But that's beside the point. The guy was right. She was completely unprofessional. She was disrespect. She was disrespectful to Phil. But most of all, she was disrespectful to Phil's viewers. The people that pay her fucking bills. The people that are responsible for her fucking four door dashes a day. The people that are responsible for her gated community. The people that fucking fill up her gas tank to get her fat ass to, to her part time job. She disrespected those fucking people. And this guy was right to call fuck, call her out and call him out on this shit. But of course, Phil is such a fucking pussy whip fat. You know what I'm going to say. He's such a pussy whip person. That he had to fucking come on and defend Cat. There was no reason to defend Cat. All you had to say was she just wasn't feeling it. And, and that's just the way she was. And she decided to leave and apologize. He should have fucking apologized. That's what he should have did. He should have apologized to his dents and should have said, look, yeah, that didn't come off as well as I wanted it to come off. Uh, my wife was tired and yeah, she left and maybe she could have handled that differently. That would have been the most appropriate fucking thing to do. But of course, you know that cat listens to uh, these fucking segments. And if you were to say that, she would fucking curb stomp you, Phil. That's exactly what would happen. Such a pussy whooped ass person. God. Just, he, he's so, that's why he doesn't fucking do uh, sexualized content or commentary or whatever, because he's scared that his wife is going to beat his ass. That, 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 that's it right there. So this dent right here, Phil decided to spend 25 minutes ranting and raving, calling out this person who actually had legitimate criticism and he wasn't bashing Kat and he wasn't bashing Phil. He was just saying, hey, you guys need to be a little bit more professional here. And maybe too that if she's going to be on to answer questions, maybe she should be looking at the chat and answer the questions herself, not have it fucking relayed by Phil and sitting there fucking saying, oh, well, no, she doesn't have to answer that or no, she doesn't want to answer that. Let her fucking answer. And and the guy was right. The people were there to see Cat, not Phil. They see Phil every fucking day of the week. They can give two shits who he is. Cat's on. They want to talk to Cat and want to know how she's feeling and what's going on with her, Phil. But of course, no, you can't. You know, with Phil, you know that. that and and he called that meaningful suggestion box content. Ran and raving at somebody who's trying to give you a suggestion for twenty minutes and essentially calling the dude an asshole. That's that's what Phil did. It was fucking comedy gold. If you guys want to go to my video, you guys, you guys can check out my video on that segment. I sped it up a little bit, so it's only about 20 minutes. But it's just completely outrageous and inappropriate of Phil for doing that. Baldur's Gate 3 progress today. Lots of great progress. We finished the hag plot line. This time around, you know, basically finding the hag, following up with the fight, and taking her out was more easy because I was already aware that there was going to be some trickery involved. I knew how to find the real hag out of her clones. Just like in the first fight, it was a trick. And this time I knew how to do it. But also, because I had done research by doing other quest lines ahead of time, I knew how to beat the hag. I knew I had to take out these mushrooms in the room so she doesn't respawn. I knew that I had to hit her with this potion so that the child that she had absorbed would be freed. I knew all this stuff. And I was using good combat stuff too. Like, for example, casting Sanctuary on the kid after it was free so no one could attack the kid. So went pretty well and then we went into the house of hope plot line and that was like two hours of today's stream and i guess what people are saying is we're near the end of that plot line and it's going to be really good finale everyone says it's one of the best in the game so i'm excited to see how it ends but basically man weird boss fights stealing interesting dialogue and now kind of trying to escape from hells pretty interesting so i'm actually very excited to play Baldur's gate 3 again next week so we get to see how that plot line continues and concludes so we're doing these major plot lines that I need to do uh, in order to finish the game. So good stuff, right? Good progress today. Tonight, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, massive progress in the story. We Last time around, we had completed Chapter 8 and went into Chapter 9. Tonight, we've completed Chapter 9 and went into Chapter 10. And humongous plot dump, humongous developments. If you've been waiting for big plot developments in the game, tonight was definitely the night. By the end of the stream, we had a new party member added, which is really neat. And the game introduced another grindy optional dungeon in Japan, very similar to the one that earlier in the game had been revealed in Hawaii. And it basically serves exactly the same purpose. You get great crafting items in there, you get rare weapons, good stuff. And so by the end of the stream, we had gotten a lot of cool new stuff. I was like, oh, this is excellent. And, uh, you know, now my plans are to really focus on story in Like a Dragon for moving forward. I want to make progress in the story as much as possible. I might even go to the end of the game, just story, and then decide, hey, do I want to stop and do optional content or not? 
Why? Because really, we've got to clear the schedule. You know, for example, for example here, Friday we got the Battlefront Classic Collection, Star Wars Returns to my streams for the first time in years. Um, and well, I say one year because last year I guess we had Jedi Survivor. But this is a game that's really cool because it was very, very popular in the 2000s. They tried to replicate that in the 2010s, and EA failed miserably. <clears throat> going to go back to the classics is going to be ultra fun. Um, then we've got Rise of Ro the Ronin which all reports are saying it's going to be a great game. Very different from anything I'm playing right now. Good variety. I would like to play other games. For example, this Alone in the Dark game and other stuff coming up. But i got to finish the games that I've been playing that are too so long now and lingering. So focusing mostly on, on just progress and not necessarily on uh, like the side content grindy stuff in Like a Dragon is probably the best way to go. And that's what I'm going to be doing. So great streaming day today. All right. So guys, I'm off tomorrow. Yeah, nobody cares, Phil. Thank God that you're off, because everybody needs a fucking break from your stupid ass. By the way, the one meaningful piece of content from the uh, Like a Dragon Infinite Beg stream was actually Phil insulting the dents. That's right. Phil insulted the dents. How exactly did Phil insult the dents? Well, of course, he was complaining about what does Phil always complain about? Support. That's right. Support was abysmal. Phil made what twelve bucks? Uh, that's twelve bucks after about six bags uh, on the night stream. And of course, before he part started playing the gameplay, he started talking about how he's not getting any support whatsoever for this playthrough. And of course, it's disheartening and all the rigmarole bullshit. But the one fucking thing that Phil said, and you guys can check out my video. I posted it before this one. He actually said that he would be making more money flipping burgers than sitting on stream watching or playing like a dragon. And you might listen to that and just say, ah, oh, well, it's just an innocuous comment. You know, it's just Phil being Phil. No, it's a little bit more deeper than that. Uh, as, as much as you know, Phil hates manual labor. He hates retail. He hates restaurant workers. Anybody that he deems beneath him. And he, he deems people that work in restaurants and in retail as below him. So for him to sit there and actually say the comment that I would be making more money flipping burgers is a straight shot insult at the fucking dents. That's exactly what it was. He sat here and said, you guys are being assholes. You guys are being greedy and you guys aren't paying me a living wage. You guys aren't paying me what I'm worth. And what I'm providing here is many meaningful content and you cheap asses don't want to fork out any money. I rather go flip burgers. That's what he's saying. He's saying, I rather go flip burgers, which he finds demeaning, than sit here and stream to a bunch of stingy debts. That's actually what Phil was trying to say here. Honestly, that's what he was trying to say. And of course, whenever you listen to Phil, you have to really listen closely and you have to be able to translate um, uh, Pig Latin. You need to know Pig Latin. Because if you don't know Pig Latin, you miss all those little subtleties there. So it was just a fucking jab and Phil just being an ungrateful fucking douchebag. Unfucking graceful. Even if you feel that way, Phil, why say it? Why say it? Because you know you're going to have people in chat that may not be able to afford to give you anything. Feel bad. They probably feel bad. And of course, that's what you do. You want that fucking guilt trip. And you want people to throw... You want one of your whales to throw you a lifeline and throw you a $50 tip. You want some an anonymous dent, a.k.a. OIC, or a.k.a. Slayer, or one of those idiots, just throw you some fucking cash. And you're fucking pathetic. You are the epitome of a failure. And yeah, Turkey Tom was wrong. 10 years of failure is in fucking correct, Turkey Tom. It's 41 years of failure. His, this motherfucker, since the day he was born, was a fucking failure. And to the day he dies, will continue being on level one and nothing but a douchebag failure. Well, that's it, folks. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy the, the overlay. And that's right, uh, Phil might be putting in noise gates, but your boy Duty is putting in new overlays. Overlays will save the business, folks. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out.